Hey, welcome to Barn Tech. Today I'm in the barn with my Swisher 44 inch trail mower. It breaks every time I use it. Um, it's got several design flaws that cause it to break. You can see right now it's held together by a ratchet strap. It's missing this handle. I'm gonna go through today and show you some of the changes that I've made to make it a little better. And I'll also make some changes today that will hopefully make it not break in the same places next time I use it. I don't know if you can tell, but this is not the engine that came on this mower. Actually, this is a 17 and a half horse engine that I got out of a riding lawn mower. Here's the original engine that was on that Swisher trail mower. You can't see it here, but the rings were collapsed in this engine. It was just complete trash. And uh, rather than rebuild that engine, I went ahead and put a much bigger engine in there. One of the benefits of upgrading the engine was that it had this electric starter. So to go with the electric starter, I put a long battery on it and wired that into the control system that uh, goes up on my ATV. The mower had a design flaw to begin with, but I made it worse when I put the larger motor and the battery up here. And that design flaw was this. When you start pulling this thing through a field, it gets to bouncing like that. And in my case, I broke one of the metal pieces here. This rod that is supposed to keep the uh, mower level actually snapped off and I ended up burning up a belt because that rod snapped. So I'm gonna pull some of this stuff out of the way, get that ratchet strap off of there, and then weld that rod back up. And here's where the end snapped off. All right, and there's what happened right there. Um, that snapped off. Looks like that could stand to be a little bit stronger. I'm going to think about what I'm going to do to that, but I think for now I'm just going to weld it back together. But I've got to get it good and clean before I can get a weld on it. All right, now I've got to bevel the edges so that I can get a good weld down into there. All right, well, it's not super pretty, but that's what it looks like without any grinding. So I think that's gonna be good enough. Uh, definitely got enough heat in there, so things should be held on pretty good. Just for grins, we'll... Uh yep, it's on there. Before I put that rod back on, I should go ahead and fix the problem that caused the rod to break in the first place. And that's going to require me to chase a squirrel real quick. So I need to fix the lowering handle so that I can see what the maximum wheel travel forward is. Because the reason why that rod broke is because there's too much weight riding on the tongue right now. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the wheels forward. Uh, but before I can do that, I need to fix the lowering mechanism. So if you look at this handle, you'll see what they did was they stamped it out of one piece of steel to save on cost. We're going to make this better so it doesn't break again. All right, so I welded up the, the cracks right there. 
um, welded them top side, bottom side, and then I filled in on these edges right here. I think that's going to give it a lot of strength. But I'm in it for a penny, I might as well be in it for a pound. So let's go ahead and weld a couple of washers on there and this thing should never break again. Well, if you want to learn how to weld, I'm afraid you're on the wrong channel. But if you want to watch a redneck get it done, you're in good company. I got a couple of washers on there now to act as gussets. My welds aren't real pretty, but they're going to be strong. And uh, I'm going to paint this up and then stick it back on there. Well, I did a bunch of measuring and figuring last night, and I'd really like to move the wheels forward at least seven inches, but what I figured out is that the axle is gonna hit the pulley cover if I move it more than five and a half inches. So I'm gonna move it forward five inches, and that's gonna be the best that I can do. couple of marks down at the same height as these just using the edge of my uh, caliper to make the marks now I'm gonna measure the five inches and then I'm just gonna scribe where each of these crosses the line there reading in the Bible this morning and it said, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Take my punch and mark where I want to drill. All right, that marked my four holes. So now let's drill them out. Since I moved the wheels forward, I needed to do something different with the suspension. I could have shortened these rods here, but I really didn't like the way that they had made the suspension in the beginning, so I did something a little bit different. See, I welded some tabs onto the tongue so I can change the way that the front suspension is done. So here's a view of what my front suspension looks like now. I've got these turnbuckles that I can use to set the ride height. I welded a couple of tabs on the tongue and then on the uh, body here. Before, the main problem I think with the front suspension was that this part here that was designed to slide back and forth was too loose. So it still bounces a little bit. 
but as you can see, however hard I bounce it, and it'll pretty much support my full weight now, I, I don't make this part touch the ground anymore. So I think that's going to keep the blade out of the dirt now and uh, make it to where I don't burn up nearly as many belts. Now I need to figure out how to mount these back on there so I can keep trees and fence posts off of the wheels. Well, I've said it before, if you've come to this channel to learn how to weld, you're on the wrong channel. But that looks like that'll get it done. So we've got good penetration, ugly beads, but it'll work. Well, my changes to the mower worked great. I was able to mow for a couple of hours without anything breaking. So that's going to do it for this video. So why don't you click on one of these other videos or get out there and fix something.